I said, empty your mind, be formless, shapeless, like water. Now you put water into a cup, it becomes the cup. You put water into a bottle, it becomes the bottle. You put it in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. Now water can flow or it can crash. Be water, my friend. Let's pause for a second. When you hear the word Hong Kong, what comes to your mind? The most recognizable martial arts hero and popular action film star who also believes that the people of Hong Kong and Taiwan belong to mainland China and therefore do not deserve freedom? Or that Hong Kong is one of the world's most thriving economies and a hub for international trade but a little overpopulated? Perhaps you would say Chinese food. Yay! Like this? So this is a Cantonese uh, restaurant. Their main cuisine is Cantonese, right? And hot, hot clay pot, uh, sorry, clay pot rice is one of our main uh, cuisine in Guangzhou. I said, empty your mind. That's right. Let's eat Hong Kong style clay pot rice today. Before I start, I want to shout out to Obakal for leaving a comment and letting me know that Kushi is king. If you like oysters too, click the link below after this video to learn more about three locally farmed oysters in British Columbia. I want to thank Obakal and viewers like yourself who support me and allow me to share more food and travel insights with you. If you want to be featured in my next video, click the like button and leave a comment below. So what is a clay pot rice? Originated from southern China, clay pot rice is a widely adopted dish across Southeast Asia, mainly Hong Kong, Malaysia, and Singapore. According to the Book of Rites Commenter and other archives, the historical origin of clay pot rice dated as early as 2,000 years ago in the Guangdong province. The dish was very precious back in the time. Based on the family recipe from Wei in 631 AD, only royalty and upper class in the Tang Dynasty would have a chance to eat this dish. Thus, clay pot rice was once given the name the Royal Mother of Yellow Rice. Uh huh. At that time, a rare type of yellow jasmine rice was used as the main ingredient to accentuate the wonderfully rich, mellow, and nutty flavor of the rice. The modern clay pot rice dish uses white rice that is aromatic, soft, slightly sweet, and sticky. Now, get ready to salivate. We're gonna try their clay pot rice and clam. I've never tried their clams here. I wonder if it's good. Let's see. Thank you. Clay pot rice is traditionally prepared atop a charcoal stove to impart a smoky flavor to the dish. The temperature of coal stoves is relatively lower than a gas stove, thus taking a longer time to cook. Coal or wood stoves create an unforgettable taste for the dish. The crispy rice at the bottom tends to be thicker and crispier as well. The delicious clay pot rice in the 80s also rely on wood fire to enhance the aroma. And here's an industry secret. Shh. Many restaurants would add lychee wood to get a scent of lychee. It produces a subtropical fruit with a floral smell and fragrant sweet flavor. Great for a mild flavored Asian style food. 
When it comes to toppings, clay pot typically combines bok choy with the protein like black bean pork ribs, sweet savory Chinese sausage, steamed chicken, or dehydrated salted fish. The pot is cooked directly over a fire. It arrives piping hot so you always hear a dramatic hissing sound when you pour the sweet soy sauce into your rice. Since the pot is so hot, another character is the layer of golden crust at the bottom. When you mix the rice with the toppings and sweet soy sauce, you get deep umami, charred aroma, and taste all in the same bite. You will need to give it a good stir to make sure the sweet soy sauce touches every bit of the rice, especially on a cold and rainy day. This is no doubt the ultimate one-pot comfort Cantonese classic for everyone to enjoy. Growing up in Hong Kong as a kid, my fondest memory of Cantonese comfort food is definitely the roadside eater. I still remember a chef single-handedly managed four to six charcoal stoves with a variety of different clay pot rice dishes, all while smoking a cigarette like a boss. It is this type of experience that shapes my sentiment towards food in this world. To me and many other immigrants who left Hong Kong before 1997, this dish forges a connection between my heart and my family's traditions and history. Along with the superb taste, I cannot find a more satisfying way to feed my soul. Lastly, this is not a sponsored video, but I want to give a huge shout out to the Hong Kong number one Chinese restaurant in Burnaby, British Columbia. Thank you, Erica, for allowing me to film the beautiful videos inside your busy restaurant. I will leave their address in the link below and share more dishes at the end of this video. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you learned a thing or two about this ultimate comfort food for many Cantonese people. I am heading to Winnipeg, Manitoba, and I can't wait to share my food journey with you. Please like, share, and subscribe so you won't miss my new video. Until then, stay safe, and I will see you next week. Bye!